when the Spirit came to Mary, and he, they said when He told Mary those things, it says she hid it in her heart. So this is an attribute of a godly woman. This is an attribute of a wife. This is an attribute of a woman that hears valuable, precious things from people's hearts and lives. And we hide it in our hearts, not for the sake of using as ammunition to get people to do or to make sure that we have something to get somebody. But part of being a godly person and a a virtuous woman is we're going to hear a lot of things we can never repeat. I want to start in Proverbs 31, 11, verse 11 through 12. And, you know, I love what it says. It says, Her husband trusts her without reserve and is never and never has a reason to regret it. Never spiteful. She treats him generously all her life long. Mm. So, you know, marriage. Let's talk about marriage in the Proverbs 31 filter. And I know there's a lot of women that are watching this that you maybe aren't married or you're a widow or maybe you just never have been married. And I I wanna talk for a few minutes about what it looks like to be a godly woman and what I believe that this author is giving us context for, which is trust in relationship. Mm -hmm. Now, I got married at 27 and I was... I was single and ready to mingle. Like I had been praying for my husband for a long time. And I mean, I was a little girl. My parents would pray for my husband. And so by the time I hit 27, it felt like I was 47 and had been praying for my (laughs) husband. And then I met my husband. He's four years younger than I am. And I did not think I would marry him at all. In fact, when I first like started kind of having feelings, I kept thinking, this is so weird. I don't like him. He's not going to be my husband. (laughs) And yet he kept winning me over by his kindness and his love for God. And when we got married, I just thought, a few things. I grew up in an all-girl home. Basically, I have a mom and I have a twin sister and I have an Italian dad. And so we lived a very female life. And then I, I got married to a man. I never had a brother. I didn't have a very, that kind of dad. And And I remember thinking two thoughts. And one was, the Bible said the two shall become one. And I assumed it would be me. I felt like I was the better choice of the two becoming one. Clearly, I would be that best choice. And then I also, I remember thinking that I was just marrying a male version of my best friend. Like, we are going to just be best friends, and we're going to mm-hmm. walk the mall together, and we're, he's going to, like, carry the shoes for me. And I remember early on in our marriage, he looked at me and was like, I'm not doing any of that with you. And I'm like, well, why not? He's like, because I'm not your girlfriend. I don't want to do that with you. And I remember being so offended, like, you don't think I'm fun? And why wouldn't it be fun to go to the makeup counter and pick out lipstick? Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> And he's like, well, I'm not going to actually want to sleep with you if you make me do that. So we started really going through this process of me learning what it looked like to care for my husband. And so I started to realize that he was different than I was. And part of me becoming a godly wife to him was not changing who I was, but it was it was being willing to bring the best of me into the marriage. And the best of me meant that I was going to show up in the, the kindest way possible, the most gracious way possible, and that I was going to care for him in a way that I would want to be cared for. And so as I started getting married, and I, I promise I'm bringing this all in together, I remember I would hang out with all these girls, and there's this kind of cultural thing that I think women can do, which is let's get together and bash our husbands. Like, let's get together and talk about what underwear didn't make it in the hamper and, you know, how many times I asked to do this or whatever. And and so I remember as a young wife, I would get in these environments and people would begin to talk and I wanting to fit in and finally feeling I had an outlet, I'd begin to talk about my husband and this and that. And I mean, of course, I was thinking, there's a lot more I could share. I'm not going to share it all. But there was a few things. And one day, my husband and I were hanging out, and he had come back from hanging out with some friends. And he said, "Um, did you share the specific thing that I had shared with you that was something close to my heart with these people, these girls? And I went, oh, well, yeah, of course. You know, I didn't think it was a big deal. And I remember the look on his face, like I had betrayed this relationship by wanting to share and get something off my heart and be included 
and yet completely dishonoring him. And I remember at that moment, I made a decision that I was never going to talk about my husband like that Mm -hmm. again, and that our intimate life would be intimate, and that our friendship would be above all. I would treat him like my best friend, and I would guard him, and I would protect him because that's how I wanted to be treated. Mm -hmm. And I look at Proverbs 31, and it says, you know, it's this man that he looks at her, and he's like, I can trust you with the things in my heart. And, you know, that's not just a married thing. If you look at Mary in the Bible, when Jesus, when the, when the Spirit came to Mary, and he, they said when He told Mary those things, it says she hid it in her heart. So this is an attribute of a godly woman. This is an attribute of a wife. This is an attribute of a woman that hears valuable, precious things from people's hearts and lives. Mm -hmm. And we hide it in our hearts, not for the sake of using as ammunition to get people to do or to make sure that we have something to get somebody. Mm -hmm. But part of being a godly person and a a virtuous woman is we're going to hear a lot of things we can never repeat. Can I just hear an amen? Like there are things Mm -hmm. people share with us that we, it would be a great story. It'd be funny. It would be worth it. But in the long run, we would break trust and they would never have that same respect for us or us for them. So what I really want to talk about today is the idea that Part of us working out our relationships is trust. And part of my relationship with my husband is trust. And so there are things, even in my relationship with God, that he shares with me that I don't share with everybody else. Why? Because I'm, it's a trust relationship and it's a respect. And so I just feel like in this generation where there is nothing sacred, mm-hmm. like nothing sacred, I think what this Proverbs is really talking about is that there are going to be things that we hear and learn and know that have a place of a a sacred place to hold in our hearts and to let them play out and not to be the one that shares it with everybody. And think about Mary. Mm -hmm. (laughs) She was like, I'm I'm going to give birth to the Savior. You wait. Like everyone be like, that is not the story that we want to hear. There was something about Mary knowing about timing, Mm -hmm. knowing about trust, knowing about that she could be trusted Mm -hmm. with this unbelievable miracle of the world. She was so carrying the savior of the universe mm-hmm. and she's hiding it. She's keeping it. Right. She's she's protecting it. And I just think in my own heart and I think in the hearts of a lot of people watching, we don't often make space for sacred things. And I think that's what Proverbs 31 is talking about. I think for many of us, we have to remember that when especially in relationships, I'm not so much looking for loyalty, I'm looking for devotion. Loyalty screams to me in, in a, if, if you take that word and put it in a boardroom, that condition of sacredness or loyalty, that, that trust between people is only for so long. It's almost contractual. Mm-hmm. But if you take that word and, and flip it to devotion, it, we created a bond through love. And because of love, because of the love of Jesus, I'm able to receive your story and be a story keeper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and not so much a storyteller. Mm-hmm. And so many people's lives, you know, we have the opportunity, especially for someone who's, you know, if I could speak from the framework of being a church leader. Mm-hmm. And as a church leader, you interact with so many people that are attached to a lot of stories. Right. Yeah. And they are trusting in me, confiding in me. And at the same time, there's a level of sacredness and trust that they hold me to that when they are confiding in me, I'm not turning around and weaponizing the stories to come against them or weaponizing the story and sharing it in another pastor circle. Right. That's right. And I'm preaching to an audience right now. <laughs> and, um, and it's important that we take those stories and not become a storyteller, but a story keeper because um, people's lives are held in the balance. Maybe they started at point A and maybe their God is moving them from point A to point B. But I have no business as someone who shares the gospel, mm-hmm. someone who is, who is wanting to emulate from any platform in life to communicate a Proverbs 31 woman, yeah. that when, I, when, when someone entrusts me with their mm-hmm. story, that I don't take it out of context and use it and retell the story. And now it's in, um, not just in my hands, 
it now I have shared it with so many hands right. and like a piece of coal, it impacts me and impacts them and it impacts the other. And all of a sudden I become the storyteller of the age. Right. And, and what that does is, um, I have developed a reputation that I don't keep stories. Yeah. I yeah. share stories. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden I lose trust between friends, my husband, mm -hmm. my children, who are entrusting me to keep those stories to just our family right. um, or, or uh, misuse those stories and I share it in a sermon. Uh, you know, it's, it's a very slippery slope when um, you begin to become a story, a story keeper mm -hmm. instead of a storyteller. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think the word devotion dives into all of that because when you really are not just loyal, you're devoted to the people that are around you, that are connected to you, that they have a certain, not only expectation, but a level of trust that they confide um, in you as a person, as a woman of God, a Proverbs 31 woman, and even your husband, mm -hmm. you know, who is the baseline of how you manage to keep stories. You know, there's a lot of, I think, confusion about marriage these days. And I just want to take a minute be for those of us that are married, I want, I really believe marriage isn't difficult when you set out to serve the other person. I don't mean that they're perfect. I don't mean that they've done it all right. But when I wake up every day to make my husband's life better and that he's grateful he married me out of all the women in the world he could have married, he picked me. If I set out to do that, life gets mm -hmm. so much easier. It's uncomplicated. But when I try to, and it's the same thing, when I try to use the story to create my, my value, my existence, my perfect picture, then all of a sudden he's a character in the story. He's no longer a person mm -hmm. and a man, he's, he's playing a role. Right. And that's what you're saying, Lisa, about friendships. I think Diana's saying it very well. All of a sudden, these are now characters in our story that we're creating a story mm -hmm. rather than going, you know, wait a minute. My job is to protect them whether anybody ever knows this right. part. It's not 100%. the point. The point is, I, I want to be somebody that when they leave my presence, they know so they're never going to be, life. this is never going to be right. used right. against them. And I'll tell you what, there are stories out there of me that I would hate someone to know. Not that I somehow in, in, you know, voluntarily tried to do something to get away with it, but we've all had moments that we're oh like, Jesus, gosh. I don't want to see the replay videos in heaven. I hope that that gets erased yeah. because my life is more than a moment. I have a lifestyle. And so I really think it's important. And I, I just want to challenge as a younger gen girls that are watching this. I know, I, I mean, I've shared things with Lisa about my inner life and I know it's not going to go anywhere. I'm very confident of that. But there, there is a balance on all of this. There's a sacredness from socializing and from connecting and from stories. There's a sacredness with your relationship with Christ that's going to be very important. There's going to be secrets he's going to share with you about your future that you cannot tell a bunch of people. You cannot put it in an Instagram post and let God, okay, God, you spoke this word to me yesterday, and so now it's going to be out there as a book. You, you need it to marinate. It's the reason why God gives us a baby, and we have nine months to protect it, to care for it, to get to know it. It's the same with God in our relationship. So for some of us, the reason we keep having kind of these stillborn spiritual experiences because we're not really actually allowing it to That's grow right. in the safety of our hearts yeah, really and in the safety of our relationships. So when it's time, it'll be full grown. So good. Have One of my favorite yeah. recent theologians, he passed away 25 years ago-ish, is a guy named Henry Nowen. And in his yes. devotional, The Inner Voice of Love, he talks about having the wisdom to know when to raise and lower the drawbridge to the innermost parts of your heart. And I think as Christians, oftentimes we're taught that's what connecting is. You just tell everything to everybody. And we kind of put this we wrap the word authenticity around the behavior of gossip and a lack of wisdom. And so there, I will tell you as a single woman, and I told a group of my friends this recently, and I said, y'all, if I judged marriage on what I've heard you say over lunch about your husbands, I would never want to be married. Now, these are Christian women married to godly men. I know they leave the seat up half the time. I know their underwear don't always make it. Because I hear it constantly as a single woman. But when I'm quiet 
and I listen to some of my friends who are lovely women. These are not partying hellions. But like you said, Havlet's kind of like, oh, we've got to let her hair down, come together. I think, I know part of this is just blowing off steam. But if that man who's been with you for 30 years, who's seen you at your worst, who's cried over a miscarriage with you when you lost a baby together, who if he heard what you're saying about him flippantly over Diet Coke and a salad, it would break his heart. And it's broken mine because I sit there and I think I would have been the ringleader if only I had a husband to throw under the bus. In, in the guise of connecting with my girlfriends, it's just, I've heard it enough now as a much older woman, I think, boy, be careful what pearls you're throwing to environments that will not treasure them. Yeah. What is our motive? Yeah. Why are we saying what we're saying? Um, I think you said it at, at the beginning, Havila, but it's this idea that I'm going to share this that I learned in confidence because I want to fit in with this group of people. But the question is, if, if the only way to fit in with this group of people is to yeah. degrade the character of someone that I love, um, what type of people am I trying to fit in with? And I think we have to ask ourselves that. Um, but I do think that it also gets back to design. You know, God created us to be in community with people, but community is only as strong as the trust um, that knits it together. I think about, you know, if you were to look at a herd of gazelles that were, you know, grazing on a plain in Africa, and they're just, you know, eating the grass, and, and they're just eating the grass, they're not paying attention to the surroundings, if one gazelle heard rustling in the bushes and looks up, the entire herd will look up, even though they haven't heard what was rustling in the bushes, because they trust that that gazelle has the herd's best interests at heart. Wow. And they will take off running just out of what they saw that one gazelle mm -hmm. do. But when you don't have trust, if that one gazelle was to look up, the others would be like, ah, he does it all the time and just keep eating. <laughs> And so we have to protect trust because in many ways, that's how Satan takes us out. We don't have safe places where we can talk about the things that are harming us. And as a result, Satan can attack us and he can isolate us. And so I believe that we were created to be in community because that's where safety is supposed to happen. Wow, so well said. I love that, that analogy of the gazelle. You know, um, yes, there are really special places that you can go and share your heart. There are incredible Christian counselors out there. There's pastors that are, are faithful and safe. Um, sometimes you can find a godly woman in your environment that's kind of maybe a spiritual mom or someone who's been married for a while. Why do we always go to the girls that are never just got married like us when the best people we can go to are women that maybe even aren't married but just have wisdom to say, like get it together or that's not that's not okay and and so don't sit isolated like I think Nona was saying don't we don't want you to shut down and shut up shut up we want you to find the right spaces because it is important mm -hmm. to share and and I know uh, in my life that's been critical I want to say this over you as a married woman Proverbs 18 22 says he who finds a wife finds a good thing listen if you are a wife then you're a good thing and you get to decide, are you gonna be a bad thing or a good thing? And the choice is up to you. We can be the worst thing that ever happened to them, or we can be the best thing that ever happened to them, and it's the same in our friendship. So I wanna pray for you, because I know the enemy hates marriage, and he hates Proverbs 31 marriages. And so we wanna just identify that. So God, I thank you for every woman and wife that are watching today. Whether they are married, have been married, might be married, or probably never gonna get married, God ultimately, Trust is part of what you've called us to. And so I ask, as Diana said it so well, I ask that we would be story keepers, that we would keep the sacredness of our friends, our husbands, our leaders, the stories that they shared, that we would first ask you, is this something I can share? And if not, we would hold it in our hearts to honor you and to honor them. Lord, if there's something we're supposed to share today, I pray that we would do the first step. We would find the person and we're to share it with and ask. The Bible says that we could confess to each other and be healed. I pray we could confess it and be healed. I bless every person watching today, God. You are going to be faithful to them because that is who you are.